These are the closest that some Americans have come to raising a trophy at a major. Some names like John Isner, the big retirement Sam Querrey, Tiafo Paul recently. Obviously, TP did it Australian Open this year, semifinals. Roddick made four more finals after that. So uh, let's start with the, the overarching question. How come over the past two decades, Chanda, no one has been able on the men's side to accomplish this? You know, I think the first thing you have to look at is the four guys that have kind of had a lock mm. on things. Mm -hmm. The three in particular, when you look at Roger Federer, Rafa Nadal, Novak Djokovic, Andy Murray even, um, you know, it's been tough for anybody to break through. And even for Andy Roddick, that one U.S. Open, I mean, that was hard to come by. He made additional finals, couldn't quite get over um, the line because of Roger Federer in a number of cases. I mean, it, it's just been tough. It's been a tough couple of decades when you consider how difficult it has been for anybody to break through. I think the guys coming up have a real opportunity now, certainly gaining the confidence, the experience, all of those things. And to have an example like Andy Roddick, who did accomplish it, I mean, that's got to give them some motivation as well. And I think it's good that they're pushing each other. So a lot of things have to come together to win a major. Uh, it's it's hard. It's tough to do. <laughs> it's not easy, Steve. John. It's not <laughs> it's easy. It's not easy. Um, but I think, you know, that American tennis is in a good place, American men's tennis, and they are poised, hopefully, to do some great things. That's one theme we talk about all the time here. Tennis as this relentlessly global sport, and we have Tunisians in the top ten, and we have Serbs playing, you know, players from South America. The denominator has changed in tennis, and this used to be a sport dominated by Americans and Australians and, and Brits and, and some outliers, and that's not the case anymore. So I feel like we need to sort of shift our thinking to this, this globalized world. I mean, this is, you know, General Motors does not dominate auto sales the way it did in the 1950s. Why? Because other players are entering the market. So I don't know. I mean, there are two players from the United States in the top ten. We saw a lot of semifinals even within the last year. We've got to get what happened in 1960 and 70 and, and 80 out of our head and sort of adjust our math for the current climate in tennis, I think. All right, let's, let's take a look because we got five American men still alive in the third round of this year's U.S. Open. Look at the bottom half of the draw where we find a few of them there. Yeah, and, and look, we talk about this a lot. You see Taylor and uh, Tommy Paul and Tiafo all top 10 or there thereabouts and then you also have Ben Shelton in there as well and they all have great opportunities and they're coming along in an era that is starting to show glimpses of opportunity just glimpses with a couple of the big three not around and uh, Novak Djokovic is uh, at some point going to slow down so there is an opportunity look it's very simple we become a product of our environment OK, and before Andy Roddick, it was Sampras and Agassi and Michael Chang and Jim. And everyone was like, well, why does Andy only win one? Yeah. You know, yeah, then that right, was a problem. Right. And he only won because they were used to that. And so you become a product of the environment. It's been a rough go of it. Things are cyclical. I believe that really in my heart of hearts. And John, you're right. It's a global endeavor now. And right now with those names that we just saw, those guys will create opportunity. And it's going to be up to them to convert. But what we can't do is live in the past. We should enjoy the past. Use that for the legends that we've had. And hopefully these guys will get out there and give themselves a chance to hold up one of those big trophies. All right, Paul, I'm going to come back oh. to you because as one of the main guys on Taylor Fritz's coaching team make the case for Taylor Fritz to break this streak. Oh, he absolutely has a chance. Look, Mike Russell does such a great job day-to-day -day stuff with him over 30 weeks a year and Wolfgang Oswald's a great physio, keeps him fit and healthy. This kid is a special player and mostly between the ears. He is one of the best mental players I've been around throughout my career. He has the innate uh, mental skills which I think are paramount to being able to win a major. Uh, physically, he has a game that can be streamlined and simplified. He's got to trust it and the the biggest thing about great players is they know what to do under pressure and they trust it um, and that he is learning he's getting better the biggest theme for me is last year Taylor Fritz got to be top 10 in the world not by becoming better player he became a better average player what I mean by that his average level got to a new height and that's the difference and that difference will get you an opportunity to win a major at some point one of the best mental players you've ever been around that that says a lot so with the guys that you've been around Pete Sampras Roger Federer 
All right, Francis Tiafo, last year at the U.S. Open, huge run, made the Final Four, make the case for Big Foe to break this streak, Chanda. You know, I think a player that's going to break through, they've got to play a very, a very physical style of tennis, and they've got to play it with confidence, but also uh, with some consistency. And I think that's one of the things that has changed in the Francis Tiafo game. When he's not, you know, playing lights out CBS tennis, He's playing, you know, controlled, aggressive tennis out there, using all of his weapons. That's not easy to do match in and match out over the course of a major. It's also not easy to do against, you know, these, uh, you know, all-time great players. Mm -hmm. uh, he was able to do it against Nadal. I think it's a lot tougher when you look at trying to do that against Novak Djokovic and, and players like that. But I think he can. I think he does have that ability. Uh, but I think that's going to be the key for any one of these players to be able to break through. You got to you got to play that that physical brand of tennis like a Stan Wawrinka, like a Del Potro, mm. who were able to get those major titles, a Marin Cilic even, who has the big weapon and the serve and you know the the. Uh, power off the ground. So I think that's the kind of tennis they've got to be able to play, but consistently in the big moments. And the last thing, let me just tag that. Remember, a few years ago, you had to beat two or three of those guys uh -huh. to yeah, win right. a major. A little different right now. Well, now you got to be Carlos yeah, Alcaraz, exactly. though. There's, there's yeah, a, yeah, but Carlos, yeah. Carlos Alcaraz is great, but he's not those guys yet. Right. Not yet. Right. But none of those guys got to number one in the world as a teenager either. So, he, I mean, he brings some pretty special stuff 100%. to the table. <laughs> uh, John Tommy Paul is right on the verge of the top ten right now. Live rankings, 11 in the world. Make the case for TP to, to break this streak and win a major. On that list of American semifinalists, what was the most recent name? It was Tommy Paul. Um, I, you know, the athleticism is probably the first thing you point to. This is also someone who's quietly won an awful lot of matches. You have to think you know, winning begets winning. I want to go back to something you said, though. How much of this breaking through is kill shots and weapons and serve percentages and forehands and backhands? And how much of this is managing your body, managing the moment, these elements of professionalism that I always thought the big three didn't get enough credit for? But but how much of this is the actual tennis and how much of this is something that, that's much more sort of less tangible? 75-25 between the ears, in my mm. opinion, at that really? level. That's a big difference. Wow. Yeah, well, exactly. Well, and it gives hope to people to handle it well. Absolutely. Uh, by the way, Ben Shelton, Michael Moe, also still in the draw in the third round. Opportunities to break this two-decade streak. Andy Roddick, our guy, the last one on the men's side to win a singles trophy for the USA.